Facebook Live, Facebook Live, we have arrived. One more time, y'all. Let's get it in. Conference muted. Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is Watchman. Derek Yahuda, Israel, also known as Pastor Derek on the early what I see to scripture study and prayer line on this 24th day in June 2022. What's up with a big bro? Is up in here. Cole Robson is up in here. Colt Rita B is up in here. Melissa is up in here. My niece Johanna. Who's a Matty Yahoo? It's in the building. Yakuan and my mom and Elder Yosef and Battle. And my big sister Fee up in here. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um Yeah. Y'all let's go to um First Yakuan or First John Yakanan rather Don Deems Bokato First John um, two and one. Hallelujah, Warren, Warren, good to see you in here. Hallelujah. Good to see you in here, sir. Shalom, family. Nicole Fontenette. I'm Fontenetta. Long time. Good to see you in here. In a while. <laughs> Teresa, good to see you in here. Those of you got your tag game, get your tag game going. Hallelujah. <clears throat> First John 2 and 1. Look what it's at, y'all. Patricia Johnson. Boca Tov. We in First John 2 and 1. My little children, these things write I onto you. That you sin not. Can we even talk like that in the times we're living in? In this so-called church dispensation. Can I say don't sin? Trinda, good to see you in here. That's almost like cussing, huh? Ain't nobody perfect. What you talking about? Everybody see it. <laughs> My little children, these things write out on to you that you sin not. <sighs> Leslie Sutton, good to see you in here. What's up, Trinda? My little children, these things write out on to you that you sin not. Okay, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahushua HaMashiach, the righteous. Did that take away the fact that he said don't sin? Brianna, good to see you in here. Always a pleasure. Did y'all know the goal is not to sin? Are, are, are we aware of that? How many of us consider to stop sinning? Tia, Tia, what's up, Tia? What's up? Bokuto, Miss Baka. Mark Logan, good to see you in here. 
how how many of us literally decide we ain't sinning no more? Literally. Or do you subconsciously walk around expecting to sin? Denise Wilkins, good to see you in here. Or you subconsciously expect to sin? Expect to respond wrong, say stuff you shouldn't say, and do stuff you shouldn't do. <clears throat> it's in your subconscious mind. How many of y'all been Catholicized to the point that you believe the hype? Because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and that's just the thing. That's just what everybody do, sin. Good, good fight, uh, Trinity. Even getting deeper than that, how many have decided that we're not going to sin? Tim, good to see you in here. Not. I'm telling you right now, if I went into a church and said this, I'd get ran up out of there. I'm telling you that. Barbara, good to see you in here. They'd run me out of there. <laughs> Period. If they did let me finish talk, talking, uh, somebody would come behind me. The pastor would come behind me and say, well, we all sin, brother. They would call me brother. <laughs> we all sin. Everyone's a sinner. Saved by grace. Are y'all with me? Certain churches say, Doc. You're all going to sin, Doc. <laughs> Jeff Brown, what's up with the family member? How many of us got the state of mind that I'm not sinning? Like, I'm not sinning today. I'm not doing nothing to go against y'all today. How many of y'all think like that? Look what it's saying. First, Yak uh, Yakanan. Second chapter, first verse. My my little children, these things write on you that you sin not. How many of y'all is captured by your flesh and you're in a situation that you're going to sin? Period. You're just trying to do a little better, but you're going to sin. Your, your, your flesh has captured you. Some people flesh captured them, meaning... They're hearing the word, they, they, they decide they want to obey the word, but they wake up in, in a bed of fornication. In other words, who's laying next to them, they're not married to them. But yet they're deciding they want to obey Yah, but they wake up in a bed with someone they shouldn't be in the bed with. Going halves on the bills with somebody. How many of y'all in a situation like that? So, to look at a scripture like this, a person like, by default, can't think like, I'm not going to sin today, because they wake up, they go to bed and sin, they wake up and sin. How many of y'all situations like that? My little children, these things right are under you that you should not. I mean, it literally is a... Don't sin. And if any man sin, okay, uh, 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 Yanisi, Yahoo, good to see you in here. Shalom. Great talking to you the other day. My little two, these, these things right on to you that you should not. If any man sin, okay. We're going through the mind renewal process, right? We're being processed to walk away from sin. In fact, the first move we made when we got saved was we denounced all sin in our life in, in, in the form of repentance. We denounced sin, we turned from it, period. So moving forward, we're learning the word. The Ruah is enabling us to learn the word. And 
something happen, our flesh get out of control, and we sin. Should it turn into a lifestyle, or should that be an incident? Because it's a problem when it's a lifestyle, y'all. In the same book, it says, he that sinneth is of the devil, meaning as a lifestyle. Because Proverbs will teach you a just man fall seven times and get up again. It's the wicked that fall into mischief, that scripture says. And the difference between a righteous man falling seven times, meaning that along the course of this way, unfortunately, sometimes your flesh can get the best of you. Not um, taking over your life and now you're a sinner. No, you sinned. It's not E-R, sinner. It's sinned, E-D. An incident. <laughs> Yeah, when you say if you fall, but you can get up. When you don't have y'all in your life, you fall in and you can't get up. You need to be resurrected by receiving the basura, the gospel, the word in your life. After you receive that power in you, Acts 1 talks about you shall receive power after the Ruach HaKadosh has come upon you. The spirit of the creator is living inside of you, recreating you, giving you the power to get up if you fall. But the mindset is, my little children, these things ride on you that you said not. That's the mindset. Why, why people are so sinful freely in church is because that's not the mindset. They don't have the mindset not to sin. They're taught from day one, oh, you're a sinner. We're all sinners. That's what they say. I'm telling you. I listen to them. We're all sinners. Everybody sin now. You know, everybody sin. I know you do for sure. <laughs> who's, who's preaching sin not? How often y'all hear that? My little children, these things are right on to you that you sin not. How, many, how often y'all hear that? Don't sin. Do whatever you're going to do today, but don't sin. How, how often y'all hear that? Come from the mouth of a preacher. Go to church to see if you hear that. Go to church today, see if you hear that. Don't sin. Is y'all with me? That's sad, ain't it, Tia? My little children, these things right on to you that you sit now. Okay, if any man sin, if, 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 if you sin, it, it, you're instructed not to sin, but if you do, that's not the deal breaker. If you, if, if, if you don't cover the sin, justify the sin, because you got people to go against y'all and, and they ain't never wrong, no. They always got an excuse. That's the spirit of protecting the flesh. Folks, take up for their wickedness. Banks, good to see you in here. You got folks that take up for their evil nature, for their actions. They can't admit when they're wrong. That's a form of covering your sin. And if we cover our sins, we won't prosper. When you can't admit when you're wrong, you, you stop growing. How are you going to get it right? You can't even admit you're wrong. How are you going to get it right if you can't admit it was wrong? That means you're going to continue to do it. So these things right on to you that don't sin, y'all. But if any man sin, it should be a mistake. And we have a, a advocate. This, we got someone that's advocating for us. Demina, good to see you in here. Someone on our behalf, we're in 1 John 2 and 1. Those of you that just chimed in. <clears throat> we got an advocate. Federer, good to see you in here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We got an advocate. Someone is working with us on our behalf 
and they're advocating the fact that it was a mistake. They're advocating the fact that we're going to repent. They're advocating the fact that we have remorse. That's the advocation, I'm telling you, straight up. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no other advocate, oh, like, let them slide. It's not, it, it's, it's, it's let them sl slide because they're remorseful. <laughs> but we do have a, a, a advocate with the father. That slain lamb. That's the advocate. <laughs> the paycheck for what you just did. That's the advocate. Yeah, he looked at the, that body that he lived in. Because the body rose. Yeah, he coming back. He get to look at that slain body, pierced in his side, beard ripped out his face. He get to look at that. Just to let you know how awful sin is. He looks at uh, uh, the results of a murder, of a torture murder. He look at the he look at the remains, his remains of the torture murder for that sin you just did, and that's advocating. The advocate is like they're not tr tr trodden me under under their foot. Like forget that murder. That torture murder, you know, I want to screw that torture murder. I'm, uh, you know, I want to cuss them. I don't care. No, it's not that. Oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No. You're not looking at the body and taking it for granted, right? That's, that's what the advocate, when he look at the body, he's reminding himself of what he did to save you. And you need to be reminded too of what he did to get you in a, in a situation where he's going to present you blameless before his presence. Because the goal is to the, the reconciliation of man, the fallen species. There's hope for the fallen, fallen species. We're not just wicked through and through like that. Our old, the old man that was crucified with him is. That's why uh, the old man was crucified with him. But now we're walking in the new man. And if we m mess up, and, and, and respond out of the old man, the advocate looks at the slain, the, the slain body, the remains. Have you heard? heard have y'all ever heard the term uh, remains? They go, they go look at the remains. What that mean? It was a murder, or somebody died. Still remains, tore up body. So he look at that tore up body. Yeah, the one we were introduced to when we first got saved. The murder that, that took place because of the awfulness of sin, wickedness, right? So if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, right? Through the eyes of that body. Yahushua HaMashiach, the righteous, okay? And he is the propitiation for our sins, which is uh, the atoning sacrifice. He sacrificed his life that we might live. That's the propitiation. He's the paycheck. He satisfied the punishment for our sins and what we do in response is we go through a mind renewal process to where we ain't sinning no more. We know sin is the enemy. We know we used to be the children of disobedience, but now we obey him. That's what we do. I know I can't do that no more. I know what he, I know what he did to get me from paying the consequences for what I used to do. And I appreciate it. That's why he was so angry when he was saying, um, you know, they counted the blood of the covenant, an unholy thing. In other words, uh, what I went through for them, they say is worthless. They still want to do what they want to do. And he was angry. 
was I was angry about it. After all what I did, you're going to go back and start doing that again? Ah, don't do that. That's not good. <laughs> my little children, these things right on to you that you sin not, so don't sin. That's the mindset. If you do, oh, we got we 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 got provision for that. Because of your because of your mindset. You have a certain mindset. When we sin, we have remorse. Only thing that kills remorse is false doctrine. Or you keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again. And then your conscience is seared with a hot iron. Your conscience don't bother you no more. Keep doing something. First time you do it, it's wrong. You do something and it makes you feel terrible. Can't sleep at night. But if you keep doing it, your conscience will just go dim. Now you can do it and go straight to bed, go to sleep. You ain't worried about it. Like a fornicator. Gave your, gave your heart to the most high. He called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. You fornicate, you feel terrible. But if you position yourself like y'all going to live together now. You're going to do some common law marriage type stuff, whatever. But you 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 keep doing it. Your conscience going to bother you less and less. And then eventually it's not going to work at all. It ain't going to even bother you no more. Then you're going to love a doctrine like oh, one saved, always saved, or a sinner saved by grace. You're going to need that for your conscious sake, for your dead conscious sake, so you can feel good about yourself. Don't nobody want to be walking around here condemned? Do you know a part of the delusion? You know how the Bible speaks about the delusion, right? When you don't have a love for the truth, it said the uh uh, the Most High will send you a strong delusion that you believe a lie. Do you know a part of that delusion is it comes from a dead conscience? Because your conscious job is to warn you according to the Ruah. Your conscience bothers you when you sin. But when you continually do it and you kill your own conscience, then after your conscience is dead, you can sin and feel good about it. Like, like say, if you're a part of a ministry that's preaching truth, right? And you're changing and you're growing. Say for whatever reason, you know, always got to be a man or a woman. More than likely, that's what it be. But say you leave, it first bother you. Or before you left, it was bothering you. But as you continue to go against them, it bothers you less, 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 and less, and less. That's how, that's how that works. And after it's your conscience stopped working because it's seared with a hot iron, then you'll start believing that you're cool because your conscience ain't warning you that you're not cool, you're in danger, danger, danger. <laughs> Your conscience don't do that no more. So now you're a perfect candidate for the strong delusion. In fact, that's how it happened. Now you have a strong delusion. Ever met any religious people that be out of pocket as heck, but they can't admit it, and they always justify themselves? They quote the scriptures out of context. They believe in they all good. They get the mumbling, some stuff. Just weirdos, right? Spiritual weirdos. As if them and y'all is good. That do be the type of people that that uh, that the, the the idea of is Yah is me and Yah against the world because they don't obey and their conscience gets seared and now they don't have to assemble. Them and Yah got it. You know what I mean? You got to be careful of people like that. I've met some pretty cool people in my time, but they running aids. Even though they study and they do all kind of religious stuff for y'all, but they're running aids. They they adopt as me and y'all gets the world, and they just not they not pastorable. They not come on, talk back to me. Without question, Tia. And I'm talking about to the point of. Uh, like you're faithful to a ministry, period. You got to be careful eating everywhere. 
which is a whole nother lesson. But um, you, you got to be careful. You can't just all be all over the place. It don't work like that. You you can you can you can minister all over the place if you're anointed to be evangelist, <clears throat> but you can't just run and gain all over the place. And you got the times we're living in. That's the spirit that's on people though. They all over the place, and 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 that's why they be having like poison doctrines in them and all. It just it's weird. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. My little children, these things write out on you that you sin not. Don't sin. And if any man sin, okay, we have an advocate because our state of mind is we don't want to be sinners no more. When we received him, we denounced sin. We repented. We turned from it. Now we belong to the most high. And what he's doing is taking us through uh, the transformation process. Have we read uh, 1 John 1 and say, if, if, if you walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Yahushua cleanses us from all sin, right? So, so the fellowship process cleanses us from all sin. That's what it does. We're in a spiritual washing machine and there's accountability in the body. And my brothers, and my, my brothers keep it. The answer is yes. Know them that labor among you. And, and we're supposed to, we're supposed to be in this, in this, in this cleansing process. The word is coming. And it cleans us, a type of a Mo, Moshe, a type of a Moses. The word is coming to Yasharel, and it's supposed to cleanse. And, then, and if he need help, he'll, he'll bring in elders, just like in, in, in the wilderness, you know, bring in elders and, and going through the wash machine process. And the most high is sending, you know, word. Do he deal with everybody? Yes. But they're in fellowship. Oh, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Anyway, if something happened, right? Say if something happened. Say if they do a blackout, then what do you do? You gonna you you gonna have to fend for yourself up under them circumstances. But that's circumstance. Let me give you an example. Um, children should be at home with their parents, being raised. But if a war break out and we all get scattered, then the children don't have to come home. Ain't no home to come home to. And they hardly gonna be wishing they was home. The parents is gonna be longing for their children. And all, but but the circumstances dictated that, not rebellion. If a child leave home prematurely, that's rebellion. They're a runaway. Same thing with the house of prayer. Can a person be saved uh, in the time of chaos and they can't come home? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. He'll meet you. And even in those circumstances, he'll have you meet who you need to meet and he's going to take care of you. Alina, good to see you in here. Oh, you know how, because you know how the mind get to one. What if we were on a on a desert island and you know folks come up with all these scenarios to justify they they um they solo bolo ness, <laughs> they rebellion, they float all all over the place. Spirit, listen. So, so the second verse says that he's the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also the sins of the world. Okay. Um, what he did is a for Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For Yah so loved the world. But like I taught before, the world is inclusive to the world. That whosoever believeth, now the, the that world got smaller. The move was made for the world, but only the believer is going to cash in on it. Because they're going to be reconciled with the word. Because salvation is predicated on being reconciled with the word. Court Rita B, good to see you in here. Are y'all with me? Yeah, salvation is predicated on being reconciled with the word. The word is for everybody. 
For Yah so loved the world. But he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, that crowd just got smaller. It shrank tremendously with that statement. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life because they're going to cash in on what he did. Same thing right here, second verse. And he is the propitiation for our sins, the paycheck, the ransom. And not only for, for ours only, but also for the sins of the world, see? But the world not going to cash in on it. And those that got the state of mind to sin not, they cashing in. Because our mindset is not to sin. And if we do sin, we regret it. We get it right, we keep going. We keep growing. We keep learning. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying. Y'all pray for me. Do the best I can. Ruah, help me. Listen. So then the third verse says, and hereby know, and, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Okay. Well, because I be listening to other preachers and stuff like that. And I be listening to Israel a lot and I be feeling bad because they be like swinging. Like trying to get us onto this, keep the commandments on stone. And it breaks my heart and they be swinging too. Talking bad about fake, you know, fake uh, Israel. I would be one of them, according to them. I'm, I'm fake Israel. Oh, I told, I warned you about these preachers. It's going to tell us we ain't got to keep the commandments. Now, I'm not going to switch this lesson, but I was talking to uh, uh, Nishi, Nisi, your Nishi, right? And I told her I must touch on this. So I'm, I'm going to be reminded to touch on it more, but I'm, I'm messing with it a little bit right now. But listen, um, see, when you look at Jeremiah, who, Jeremiah uh, 31, 31 through 34, when he said he was going to enter into a new covenant with Yasharel, with Israel, not as he did with the forefathers. He made that, it's not the same covenant. And he made the covenant with the forefathers in the wilderness. When he made made the covenant with Israel, Yasharel, right? He, he's, making it, he's making it different, right? So now it's going to be written on the tapes of your heart. But you got to understand it's the conclusion version of the Ten Commandments. There's a conclusion version. There is a conclusion version of the feast days and the festivals. There is a conclusion. There is a conclusion of the lamb's blood that you put on the doorpost. There is a conclusion to that. It's not go kill a lamb and go get some doggone blood and put on your doorpost. You go, if they got homeowners associations, you're going to get put out. Your house look weird and it stink. There's a conclusion. And the conclusion to killing a lamb and putting the blood on the doorpost, eating bitter herbs, which are fully dressed, who gonna do that? But they say that's what we're supposed to be doing. Are you serious right now? Yeah, they serious. I thought that was a shadow and a type of having the Messiah in your life. And, and the cup that he drank was another more modern symbolization of the blood and the exiting feast that they had. <laughs> Shadows and types. Because, see, I'm going there. But anyway, because don't jump in the middle. Please understand the middle. But don't jump in the middle for your theological conclusion. Go back to the initial problem. Adam went against what y'all said. That's the real problem. So when we go through the process of the conclusion, because when the problem first happened, the Most High said, 
The conclusion, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent and the serpent head will bruise his heel. That was the conclusion of the problem. Which meant the word was going to be Become a human being. It was going to be born. The seed of the woman was going to what was going to uh, 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 house the word, which was the Mashiach. So even when he chose Yasharel, he didn't choose Yasharel because they was righteous. He didn't choose Yaakov, Jacob, because he was righteous. He wasn't righteous, nor was Esau. The difference was. Yaakov, Jacob, cared about the things of Yah and wanted the ministry of his bloodline housing his flesh, housing the word, the Messiah when he was born. Esau said, I don't care nothing about that, man, I'm finna die. What good is the things of Yah when I'm finna die? He, he had confidence in his flesh. Y'all brought the flesh because he cared about the things of y'all, but he wasn't righteous either. And that's why when he wrestled with him, he changed his name because that's a form of a new birth. That's a form of being born again. And it's all about being reconciled with the word. So, so you don't want to jump in the middle of the book and end up with commandments on stone to a people that dogged their little brother out, Joseph, That's how they ended up in Egypt in the first place. They were scandalous as heck what they did. Their daddy was scandalous for showing favoritism. Parents who show favoritism, that ain't cool. You scar your children, have them all messed up. You got to undo that stuff. Taking folks too long to fix that type of stuff. Joseph, they scandalous too. To prove they scandalous, that's why they shipped and scattered right now. They shipped and they scattered because they scandalous. Because they were born in sin and shaped in iniquity as well. Oh, don't get mad at me today. Because <sighs> I'm telling the truth. They scandalous too. Huh. So, second verse. And he is the propitiation, the, 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 the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins only, but not only, but not for ours only, but also for the world. Hereby know we, here, hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So you want to talk, see, look, he said commandments. Hey man, come on now. You serious? Yeah, you serious, huh? Okay. Well, he said commandments. Um, Was there commandments before the Ten Commandments? Did you know that Adam broke a commandment in the beginning? That's why death came on the scene because he broke a commandment. Do you know whatever y'all tell you to do is a commandment? So why this got to be talking about the Ten Commandments? Because you're theologically handicapped. You're trapped. Oh, see, there go the commandments right there. Whatever y'all say is a commandment, okay? <laughs> I, yeah. Just so you know, whatever y'all tell you to do, y'all told me don't drink. Is that one of the Ten Commandments? No. Is it a commandment to me? Yes. And I better do it. Are y'all with me? And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments, a.k.a. do what he say. He that says I know him, I'm running out of time, y'all. Listen. Alyssa, good to see you in here. And he that says I know him and keep not his command, Alyssa, we're in 1 John 2, and now we're in the fourth verse. And he that said, I know him and keep not his commands, his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. 
Are you with me? He that says, I know him. You say you're in a relationship with the most high and you don't do what he say, you're lying. Now, I know it, a lot of people innocently lie because they've been Catholicized, right? Yes, sir, Tim. But listen, the reason why we be lying is because we be Catholicized. That's why, see, you got to like be listening when the word is coming forth because I try to be teaching and cover all angles. That's what the Most High got me doing. I'm not that smart. But back to the point, like, like I've been teaching y'all in 2 Corinthians 5 and um, 16, right? 5 and 16, when it says we don't know each other after the flesh because the flesh is disqualified. And then it went on to say, and moving forward, we don't know the Mashiach after the flesh. We knew him after the flesh, but moving forward, we don't know him no more. That's what it says, right? So when you know him as the son, you miss the importance of the reconciliation of the word. The son came to reconcile you, not with the son, but with the word. Once you're reconciled with the word, the son's job is complete, right? When you're Catholicized, you're still like carnal. So you believe that when you're not obeying him, you start looking at the son. When the son already did his job by reconciling you with the word, Adam went against the word in the beginning and death came on the scene. So the word became a human being, not for you to start worshiping the human being. Give, give credit where credit is due. The son did his job, obedient son. And we praise and worship him for that. But our salvation is in reconciliation with the most highest word because now we used to be the children of disobedience. Now we're obedient to the word. That's the reconciliation. When he died, he said it is finished. The veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Now we have access back with the word. <clears throat> That's the, so when you're Catholicized, you're sinning. You keep talking about the blood of Jesus. Those of us that know his name, we start talking about the blood of Yahushua. Destiny done. Good to see you in here. Are you with me? You, 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 you will stay carnal in your relationship. You're going to be religiously carnal, having a relationship with the cross, with a man hanging on it. That, that, that's the Catholicism. That's, Catholic. that's the majority of Christianity. They got a relationship with the son and not the word because they believe they're sinners saved by grace. In other words, they believe they have a relationship with the most high through the son and they don't have to keep the word and they don't keep the word. Because they're helpless sinners. Let's go back to the rugged cross. Man, get off that man, the deacon's wife. Talking about go back to the rugged cross. Leave them little boys alone. That's what you do. That little tight shirt you got on. Leave them little boys alone. Talking about back to the rugged cross. He ain't on the straw off on the torture stake on the tree no more. He rose again with all power. Get the word. Go back to the word. Not the rugged cross, to the word. I hope y'all getting me. So when a person is Catholicized in a the theological position, they don't do what he say because they're a sinner saved by grace, but yet they got a relationship with him through the son. And that's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 14 said, we don't know him after the flesh no more. Let that go. Let your flesh go, let his go, and let's be reconciled with the word. I hope y'all heard <laughs> in the rule of what I just said. Listen. He that says, I know him, and keep not his command, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. The word is not in you. You got a form of y'all that is denying the power thereof. Fifth verse then says, and I'm going to be done, I believe. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of y'all perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Woo! Oh, let me just do a little bit more. 
And he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he did. Now you walking like the Messiah did. You know how from a theological position, I ain't Jesus, they say, right? The people got that in their ruah. So the Most High got me attacking that lie in your spirit because <laughs> you tripping. Well, we, we ain't none of us. Ain't none of us. Ain't none of us. Yahushua. <laughs> ain't none of us. Yahushua. That's a cop out. You supposed to have his word in you. You supposed to let his flesh go. And the same spirit that was in him, he said, let this mind uh, that was in Yahushua be also in you. Yeah, that's our responsibility. We're baptized to his death, so we're going to be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We're supposed to walk as he did. NIV, look what it says. Whosoever claims to live in him must live as Yahushua did. Point blank, NIV. Whosoever claims to live in him must live as Yahushua did. We live like he did. Omar, good to see you in here, man. Always a pleasure, family. Unfortunately, I'm wrapping it up. You're going to have to play it back. But always good to see you in here. Is y'all with me? I mean, that's plain and simple. Quit distancing yourself from the responsibility that the Messiah took. Because we got the same responsibility. He was found fashioned as a man. Aren't we found fashioned as men and women? Well, then do what he did. He filled us with the Ruah, his spirit, so we could. Let's stop copping out and start obeying what he's saying. Is that fair? I think that's fair. Let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for this opportunity coming for you. Humble to know how gleaming and truth of your word, that word is true. Continue to illuminate us, quicken us, make us, make us alive, make us alive, make us alive. Uh, get this Catholicism out of us, the spirit of cop out, the spirit of wicked excuse for our wickedness and cause us all to repent through the revelation of your truth. We want repentance. We want to walk away from sin and obey you. Now knit us together in you. Illuminate us, quicken us, make us alive. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and honor, not only now, but forever. In the matches name, Yahushua, we humbly pray. Hallelujah. Hua. And Amon. Amon and Amon. Listen, y'all. Um, I got a lot going on always. I'm still working on... <laughs> I, I have found an a, a Airbnb, but it's not big enough for what I'm trying to do with y'all because I want to take care of the accommodations as well. So when we all get together, those that come from out of town or just want to, you know, be in the house could be. And so I'm, I'm having a problem finding the right uh, Airbnb so we can all come together and we still would do conference. I'm just trying to work it all out. So I'm still working on that. Another thing. Got a lot going on on Shabbat. You can do good on Shabbat if y'all already know that or not. But I probably plan on doing the Shabbat service tomorrow like at 8 a.m. So, see, that's what's up, Tia. See, that's some good stuff, man. Appreciate you. <clears throat> but keep that flexible because it, 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 it the price, that's like 300 Dollars and that's not everything. That's just too high. So I might have to abandon that date, but I plan to do it in August. I was even looking at September to give us more time to save or do whatever. I'm just trying to work it out, but I refuse to stop. My sister Fee, she's been helping me. My wife helping me. Um, it's kind of been us three. Those of you that's in California with me, if y'all can help me, I'm trying to put together this retreat and a camping trip, but um, I'm just working because I want those just coming from out of town like CT I want to come to. Um, I just want, I want us all to get together and this could be more than want to come. So I'm really trying hard to put it together as soon as possible, make it cost effective so everybody can afford so we can all come together and be edified in him. So y'all continue to pray for me as I put it together and I'm praying that the date meet, you know, mesh with everybody so we can all get together. Is that, is that cool? Okay. With that being said, I'm probably going to teach the Shabbat tomorrow at 8 a.m. Count that as uh, the case right now. Count that as the case. 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Those of you in the mid, that would be about 10 o'clock. And those on the east, 
three, uh, 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 11 o'clock, right? But that, that's my thoughts right now. So act like that's, that's what's happening and let's otherwise notify. I got a lot going on and, you know, I got to do what I got to do. <clears throat> Is that all right? Um, I love y'all. I want to thank everybody to be tagging. That's very important. It's a new way to witness. Sharing is excellent as well. I think the best is tagging. Second is sharing. But please share. All y'all share. And because uh, people chime in and watch it later and stuff. Or even they come in then. So y'all get your tag game up. And I also like to thank everybody to help financially support the ministry. Because I'm telling you, we do a lot. We do a lot of feeding. Uh, housing. We just do a lot. We just do what we can. And if you guys support the ministry, it helps us be effective ministry in the community. And it, and it makes sure I don't start a death as well. So I'm a full-time pastor. Full-time. Boy, am I full-time. <laughs> anyway, um, I love y'all. Y'all want to talk about the word? All you got to do is dial 302-202-1102. It's just an 815-648. Alicia, we still are praying with you. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Good seeing you in here. We're praying with you and the family. Love all y'all. Y'all continue to pray for those that are sick in their body. <coughs> Thank you. Um, 302-202-1102, extension 815-648. Y'all be Baruch. And, uh, oh, tonight, youth service. That's what I want to mean. Youth and young adults. What we do, y'all, is we bring the, the children and our young adults, if they're still in our home or whatever, and we bring them and we call into 302-202-1102, extension 815-648 at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time um, on Fridays. And I'll teach for like about 30 minutes. And then the other like approximately 30 minutes, whatever it is, you know, anyone want to question their children, the young people, according to the lesson, we all on the conference line together. And then we can just talk about it, feed one another, make sure the food, the spiritual food got inside of our young adults. And young people, and then we get off the line. So that's the plan for tonight. On Fridays, we just want to get together with the young people. And so those of you that's interested in that, because they're being bombarded by this wickedness, I'm telling you, and this sex, sexual sickness, that sexual sickness are more than likely hit every last one of them that got a phone and a tablet and be on social media, even in the schools. They hit them in the schools. We got to combat that. And that's why I started the youth and young adult uh, service on the conference line. And, 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 and when we come together, if the young people can come, because I got a whole lot of stuff laid out, you know, you know, for them so we can rescue our, our young people. Is that all right? So it's tonight at 7 uh, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And, and I'll be teaching the permit. OK, so Shabbat service. No. That, yeah, that's tonight. And Shabbat service, 8 a.m., and, uh, and, and less otherwise known for, but I really believe that. It's going to be 8 a.m., 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, the Shabbat service. Sorry if that's an inconvenience. I apologize if that's any inconvenience to anybody. Spread the word. Um, now we can go to the conference line. If, if you guys would like to, those of you that's going about your day, y'all be Baruch and Brock and Shalom. I'm gone. <laughs>